Hey guys, Frank again. Just a little update about uh, about three, four hours later. And I'm just showing you now, now that we're about uh, five of two in the afternoon. And um, I had to move the uh, panels a little bit. Now they're basically facing south, southwest. Um, and this is what we're getting. You still see it fluctuating, 148. I haven't seen it hit 150 yet, but uh, I've been playing with the angle with my voltmeter out there. Um, I'm, they're basically going to go on a shed after, um, after all, and that's going to be a fixed, uh, a fixed pitch. So, um, it's what you're looking at now about midday. And remember the sun's still a little low. It's not as high as it will be in the summertime. We're still not getting that dead, you know, and, and, and there's a real light layer of clouds overhead. I mean, a fine layer. So it's still filtering the, um, the sunlight. And, um, and this is what we're getting with two, two 100 watt solar panels with, uh, Another thing is they're running on 40-foot leads um, from the solar panels. They're 220, 220-foot lengths of uh, wire, and I have them tied in right here with um, with banana clips. You can see the white one and the black one back there. They're tied in there with banana clips, and this is how they're going into the grid tie inverter. And you can see the green light. You can see the green light going. So we're getting some power, and this is consistent. Yeah, I'm just, I, I, I seen it 150 before, but I haven't seen it recently. I was going to go back out and play with the panels, but I'm um, going to let that lay. Just let it go and see what it does. But, you know, it's consistent, and that's the thing. You know, remember we were talking about consistency with the uh, wind turbines before in some of my other videos. And, you know, the wind turbines, uh, I wouldn't say a novelty. It just has its, uh, has its goods and its bads. It depends on what area you live in and how much wind you're going to get. Uh, we got some, you know, it actually fired up here a little bit, um, you know, with some wind gusts we got through there, and it's right now it's probably sitting still, but I got to put it up another 10 feet, and I'm going to put it on a test bed and move it around the yard, so it's going to sit at the actual height where it'll actually be working at, and uh, I'll move it around the yard, and maybe I'll show you that test bed, it's going to be neat. So I got it on a thing right out there, and uh, I'm going to put it up on uh, some 2x6s with some wheels on it, with cement bags on it to keep it way down in the wind, and uh, just move it around, see what we're going to get. But these are the readings we're getting. Here's my GTIs again. It's my setup. The uh, dump load resistors aren't hooked up because for some reason um, I, I talked to uh, Jeff and Wyatt over at um, Missouri Wind and Solar. And they stopped selling these uh, Sun GTIs. For some reason they said that there's something inside that froze up. The dump load part froze up. So uh, basically what I did is I circumvented it. I got the dump loads here tied into the positive and negative down there and vice versa up here. Um, so they're basically dumping into each other, and um, I thought about hooking up the dump load resistors with a, uh, you know, the battery switch you had that you can have for your car, that you turn it off and on for, I guess, theft preventive uh, reasons. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to probably hook one of those up on the dump load resistors, so in case we get some real serious high winds, so, you know, we get some summer storms through here with some real high winds, I'll be able to switch that on to kill the, um, kill the wind turbine so it don't spin out of control and blow apart. So uh, I might do something like that. I know I can't be home all the time, but um, for the most part, for the most part, we'll try and get something working with that. But uh, here's the readings. We're, we're getting up in the, the mid-40s, um, you know, high 30s, 130s, mid-140s. Uh, so, uh, again, it's doing its thing, and that's just two 100-watt solar panels on 40-foot uh, length of 8-gauge cable. This is the 8-gauge cable here going down and into there again again i got it from uh Renergy solar out of louisiana the guys are really nice down there you can go on ebay and check them out um i've had really uh good re uh, relations with them um those guys are really nice there um again not knocking anybody else I, I it's just me personally i've been dealing with them they're on ebay i've talked to them on the phone he got back to me real nice people there um willing to work with you on anything and again the more you buy the better so um you know give them a call check them out on ebay Renergy solar Look them up there. You'll see it. Um, good stuff. Good play. Good things there. They got a lot of good stuff there. And again, they got a website themselves. You could buy direct from them instead of eBay. It's whatever you want. But um, getting back to my whole gist of this recording was just to update you at two o'clock in the afternoon here, Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Savings Time. Clocks are adjusted here. One fifty-two. We just saw it. that the um, sun's about its apex now because it's not summertime yet and it's sitting uh, dead center over top of these solar panels and this is what it's putting out just two of them on uh 
40 foot of uh, wire. So once I get them on the shed and I cut that down to about 10 feet to run into the grid tie inverter and run it here, I think we're going to see a lot more output. Definitely think a lot more output. Been hearing about some uh, some uh, knowledgeable stuff about uh, maybe putting uh, one GTI per solar panel. Well, I'm running these in 24 volts, so I got them hooked up in 24 volt, like I said in the last video, because of my 24 volt GTIs that I had to purchase for the 24 volt wind generator, wind turbine. So um, this is what we're getting. All right, guys, I got to get back to work. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Remember, solar.